balance of fairness at the outset, this is one of two events. So the WPCC, who are non-political, are running this event first, and then on the 9th of June, I think at Weymouth College at the moment, they will also be running a, an in event with a similar format, a panel and Q&A. So anyone who's in the audience who wants to go to that, that's a date that's coming up. Jeff, and uh, thank you for the Chamber of Trade, and thank you for all of you who've come here tonight to listen to us. Um, forgive the, if you wonder what this is, it's not because I'm about to attack somebody or I'm surrendered or anything like that, it's simply that I've got a little guideline here because I'm going to tell it to you from the heart and my head. Because I did feel on this particular occasion I need notice to address you all. And thank you all for coming. I know there are many here who didn't vote for me. I hope there are some here who don't agree with what I'm going to say tonight. And I also hope there are many people here who are undecided. Because that's the point of the rally, which is what this is. It's a rally. And this actually demonstrates to all of us, we were saying behind as we ate our sandwiches, kindly provided, like Phil say, this is what democracy is all about. You listening to us, we listening to you, and then we doing what you want. And that, that is as simple as that. It really is. Now, there were some of the in-team outside, and of course, I welcome that. I don't know whether you, like me, have found it quite hard to find what I would call a very, very enthusiastic inner. Now, that's not a bit like that. There are inners and outers. I'm an outer. This is an inner. Now, I've yet to find, certainly in the house, a really, really, really passionate, passionate inner. And the other day we had a debate in Westminster Hall because many of you, I suspect, uh, petitioned us to have a debate on this leaflet that the government spent £9 million pounds to deliver taxpayers' money, of course, uh, which in my view was EU propaganda. On the basis of that, we had a debate in Westminster Hall. Now, at that debate, I would say there were about 45 Conservative MPs who were for out. There were no inners at all. Not one. Sorry, I don't want to mislead you. There was the Shadow Labour spokes lady who has to be there, and there was one gentleman from the SNP, and he was one of the ones who hadn't been caught. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> and to me and others, we asked, where are our colleagues of all parties? And what was so, and sorry, Kate was there, I do apologize, Kate was there, but I'm talking about Inner's Kate. And I'd also like to make the point that the panel that we have tonight represents, obviously, the Conservatives, that's me, Labour, that's Kate, Business, and Nigel, who has always been an independent free spirit, <laughs> and is very keen, like all of us, to get our country back. Now, it's rather quick, but I'm on a stage, so I can do a little back to you, which is why I've got this head mic on, so forgive me. I'm not a good actor, but if this was a, a pantomime, let's say, and the outers, that's me, were the goodies, and the inners are the baddies. And I've always wondered, as I've started my address, why the inners aren't so passionate. What is it that doesn't make them really believe perhaps in what they're saying, I don't know. And I suspect it's because in their hearts they believe we're right to get our country back. In their hearts. And so, terrified that the outers are going to win on June the 23rd and we wake up on June the 24th to Freedom Day! <laughs> that they are panicking. And they're not enthusiastic because, and wait for this, at this stage there'll be a rumble, the band would sound, and just like those pantomimes that we all watch with children, the person dressed in green, remember? <laughs> they go, shh, ah! <laughs> 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 and boils and plagues, World War III, <laughs> and you 
madam. You're doomed. <laughs> you madam who shop at Asda or Tesco or wherever it is you shop, your food bills are going to double. You're doomed. ISIS, this group of unspeakable people who do unspeakable things in the name of a very ancient and respected religion, they're going to be celebrated. Why? <laughs> Mr. Putin, he's going to get into his tank, he still has a few, we've got none of course. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember standing in my trench in Germany in 1982, and I was told by the general, it was top secret, Richard, that's your trench, right there. You get in it, well, not quite, haven't been done. And that's where you're going to face the Russian court. You've got about 30 seconds to live from point of contact because they'll put so much artillery down on you that you'll be blown to the reeds within seconds. So I said, thanks, sir. <laughs> but we'll carry on because we're the guards and we'll do what we're told. So, we're all doomed. Why is it that the inns are so keen on talking about optics? You hear it all the time. We've opted out of Schengen. Whoopee! <laughs> We've opted out of lots of things. We have retained or got reforms from Europe that's going to make a huge difference. Why is it, and of course the euro, why is it that these inners don't want to accept all these other bits of this super duper European federalist state that is being formed even as we sit here, has been for years and will continue to be, unless we say no. The euro is central to the whole plan. 28 countries who are completely and utterly different. And don't get me wrong, I love Europe, you love Europe, but Europe, the name Europe, has been hijacked by people who want to take it away from people like you, the voter. They've hijacked it for this elite vested interest cause. Now, it will not work unless they have the euro. It won't work with the euro, but it certainly won't work without it. We think the reforms that we've got, that we will be allowed to keep them if we vote in. Let me tell you this. The reforms that we achieved are lodged with the United Nations. There is no treaty change as we were promised. There's nothing. So they are not irreversible. And both the MEPs, and I'm sure Nigel will back me up, and the European courts could overrule the reforms that we've got. Now think about it. Is this ever closer union? And that's what's written in the treaty, those three words. Ever closer union. Is that going to be, are we going to be allowed to remain out on the periphery with our little Union Jack, which they don't particularly like, clearly, they like their European flag, to stand up there and remind the rest of Europe what the UK is, and hopefully will have. No way. We are a major donor. We fund, to a large extent, this huge bureaucracy. You've heard the figure £350 million. Pounds. I hope you have. Now, commentators and journalists will try and attack us and say, well, it's not actually 350 million pounds. The fact is, some of it does come back, but the fact is we have no control over how we spend that money. That's the fact. 350 million pounds a week. Imagine if we were able to do this. What is my vision? I'm asked that frequently. What's it about? This vote on the 23rd of June is the most important that any of you will have in your lifetime. Some of you are older than me, and some younger. 
Maybe one or two in the audience has experienced a war as a child, or maybe more. This vote is the most important in our lives. Not only for us, but for our children and their children. And why is it thus? Because in my view, and the view of those who want to get out, is there can only be one set of rules made by one set of people, and that is those you elect in the shape of me, Kate, in the House of Commons. Our Parliament must be sovereign. Not now, she's not an MP yet. I'm sure one day he will. I'm sure one day he will. He has a lot behind the scenes to help us with the future. And that's what I think we all want. It really is that simple. Our freedom, our sovereignty, I use the word sovereignty, but let's talk about destiny. I.e., we have control of our destiny and our democracy. Our democracy is already being watered down. Kate and I sit at the European Scrutiny Committee, and every week, under the very able chairmanship of Sir William Cash, we see all this legislation coming in from the EU. We interviewed Margaret Beckett this other day, and she told us that the Council of Ministers, their meetings, where civil servants are told what to say and what to sacrifice, so an agreement can be made with the other 27, that it all gets so tacky and difficult they break for lunch. And I said, lunch? Is that three courses and wine? And to my surprise, she said, yes. <laughs> if we made decisions in the House, three courses and wine, I think you would rightly be rather upset. We make them in the chamber where we debate it, like we're doing now tonight. Three. Democratic. Now, if we vote in on the 23rd, everything, certainly that I believe in, and I believe, judging by the chairs, most of you, will go. I think it is that serious. Because how can 28 different countries run such different countries without running it more and more from the centre, and that is what they are trying to do, and it's there in writing. Which means that people like me and others will have less and less of a say as it's happening, and decisions will be made over which you have no control whatsoever. Now, interestingly, the word they use, and don't laugh, it's competence. They're called competences. And they pass across our desk. Competences. Competent means we are competent to look after ourselves. Thank you very much indeed. Hello, Juncker. Yeah, we are perfectly capable of doing it ourselves. When I joined the army in 1978, I swore an allegiance to Her Majesty the Queen, not to some European bureaucrat. <laughs> to protect her, her family, her subjects, and anyone else that the government sent me to do. And I served in Northern Ireland on three tours, which is interesting, but the government sent me there and we did our duty. The government elected by you. Now, we know, so far as defence is concerned, that there is a paper being written right now, as I talk tonight, trying to form a European Army, Navy, and Air Force. Mm -hmm. Where were our European allies in 1982 when I was serving and some of my friends didn't come back? <laughs> if these are friends, we don't need them. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't want to be isolationist, and I've got 34 seconds left. <laughs> I do not want to be isolationist. That is not what the out team is about. And don't let anyone of the in team, from the Prime Minister down, tell you otherwise. We are not isolationists. We love Europe. We all do. 
what a beautiful, stunning place it is with so many different languages and cultures and economies. But you cannot put them in one hat and expect them all to perform the same. It just isn't going to work. And it's not look at the evidence. The refugee crisis, to mention but one. Why have we got it? Because we have no borders. If we had strong borders, if each country had strong borders, they wouldn't come. Because the many wouldn't get through. I'm not saying we should look after them. This is where we, the wealthy West, should of course make sure when they are sent from their homes or forced out of their homes, we make sure they stay as near to their homes as possible and we pour in whatever we need to do to make sure they are looked after and then send them home. We cannot cope with millions of refugees into these countries. It's just unworkable. And you know the pressures. Pressures are all under already. School places, infrastructure. You're seeing it all every single day. Even Mr. Osborne is predicting 3 million more people by 2030. Where on earth are we going to put these people? On our green belt, that's where they're going to go. On our crumbling roads, and our strange EP practices, and our schools with no places. This is not racist, this is common sense. Yes, help them. <laughs> Right, before I get another bell, I've really told off, I'm going to end. <laughs> Let me end with this point. 23rd of June. Will you please, please, all of you, get out there and tell every single person you know in this country and beyond who can vote to do so. Do we want our country back in the sense I've described? A great Britain, which has such an amazing future. And don't listen to the detractors. We are the fifth largest economy and we will be absolutely fine. Yeah, yeah. Or do we want to get swallowed up by an unaccountable, corrupt bureaucracy? God help us if that happens. Mm. Vote time.